We're on the road with Mickey, we're gonna have some fun. Regardless of the rain or sun, our trip has just begun. So buckle up, let's go, we're about to start the show. And maybe if you like us, you'll see where else we'll go. Hey everyone, I'm Mike. And she's Sophie. And she's Brenda. Hi everyone. And he's Grogu. He says, hello. <laughs> no, no. He says, hello there. Oh, there you go. There you go. And we're on the road with Mickey. This is episode 212 for what day are we shooting for? Golly, <laughs> March 25th, 2024. <laughs> My brain is fried, people. Can you tell? <laughs> And our feature topic this week is where did Mike's brain go? <laughs> no, our feature topic is gone, but not forgotten at Hollywood studios. We are talking about things that are no longer at Hollywood studios that we wish were there. And we each have a selection of two because we didn't want to step all over our toes and everyone talk about the same thing. But before we get into that, Brenda has some D23 news that we're all going to piggyback on for our Cheddar from the Big Cheese segment. So go ahead, Brenda. Yes, it is big news. D23 has announced the 2024 Disney Legends, and we all have some favorites in the list. Uh, my favorites are Angela Bassett, or Angela Bassett, actually, um, James Cameron, Jamie Lee Curtis, Harrison Ford, and of course, the great Joe Rohde, who has put his mark all over the parks. And I mean, I'm so grateful that he got chosen to be a Disney legend this year. Absolutely. But you didn't talk about my favorite either, which is Mark Henn. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, Mark Henn is the former animator who was in charge of designing most if not all of the classical era Disney princesses so Cinderella Aurora even I think Rapunzel and Tiana he was had a part in all of their designs yeah nice and my favorite Yoda (laughs) (laughs) also known as Frank Oz do or do not there is no try yeah and you know what grogu whispered that that's his favorite too (laughs) yes he agrees with you on that one (laughs) well the full list of all of the 2024 disney legends will be in the show notes so check them out yeah Mm -hmm. and congratulations to everyone yes all right so That's our quick and easy cheddar from the big cheese. Brenda, you're in charge of cheddar from now on. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just reporting what I'm hearing. (laughs) (laughs) Now, our feature topic, as I mentioned, is gone but not forgotten at Hollywood Studios. And it's Sophie's turn to start us off. And we're each going to talk about two things that we miss from Hollywood studios and the things that we really liked about them, you know? Yes. So Sophie, you get us going, baby. All right, then. So originally we were only going to talk about one thing and then each of us realized that the thing we miss the most actually has something else that ties into it very well. And we also miss that something else. So each of us are going to talk about two. My two things are, of course, Animators Courtyard with the Animation Academy, but also I am talking about something that isn't necessarily in Hollywood Studios, but is very close to Hollywood Studios, and that is the Walt Disney Feature Animation Florida, which is really um, the back lot for the former Disney MGM Studios. So I'm going to talk about anim. Animation Academy first, because that's what I originally was going to talk about. And I am so upset that they got rid of it. I am just so upset because 
They still have it over in Disneyland in California. It's part of the Hollywood land in the Californian Adventure. And basically the premise both there and in the Animation Academy in Florida was the same. You would go in, they would have a cast member who more than likely worked in the film studios who would be taking the day to show you how to draw all these animated characters. And I think the reason why I'm more upset about this is because they actually took the Animation Academy. They did not get rid of it completely. They just moved it over to Animal Kingdom, which is part of the reason why I'm upset. I'm still glad it exists somewhere in the Disney parks. It's just they put it where Rafiki's Planet Watch was. And that does not make a lot of sense to me. Well, and even though you get to draw a character over there, it's not the same experience that was at Animation Academy. It's not because Animation Academy, it was literally built to look sort of like a university school hall where mm -hmm. you had sort of the amphitheater, the instructor so to speak was down at the bottom and then there were bleacher like seats with desks and it just looked like something you would find at say harvard or cal arts <laughs> to be a little bit on the nose and it felt like you were actually taking an actual class and now what they're doing is they've moved it to Rafiki's Planet Watch, which was in itself an amazing attraction that they have sort of nerfed because they moved Animation Academy there. And now it's just a giant projector screen with a bunch of chairs sat out. They don't have desks. It, it does not look like it's meant to be there. Yeah, and they have no banter with Mushu. It, the, the whole experience just was lost. Yeah. Just, yeah. I, I agree with you totally. That being said, you can still draw characters there. And in fact, I actually have one second. Let me go and scoot over here to get it. Don't mind me. I'm still here. You just can't see me. Beautiful view of the castle, though. Why, yeah, thank I you. I quite love that photo. I took it myself. Absolutely beautiful. OK, here we go. I'm back. So this, as you can see, is a picture of TikTok the crocodile from Peter Pan. That's very good, Sophie. I'm not the one who drew this. My mom was. Wow, that's very good. Yes, because they taught her exactly how to draw him. You can see some of the lines. Oh, come on. Some of the blue lines to help you be able to learn. That looks really good. And that was drawn at Disney's Animal. Animal Kingdom. So you can still get that. They call it the animation experience at the conservation station now. Mm -hmm. It will always be Rafiki's Planet Watch to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, when they closed it at Hollywood Studios, originally, I don't think there were any plans to open Certainly. it at Rafiki and I think they had a lot of negative feedback and Holidays. that's why they that's why they opened it back up over there in a different format I so I can't understand Certainly. why they don't put it back it's there's not using that whole area for anything it's just exactly all exactly which I think is why I'm so upset don't get me wrong I am absolutely over the moon that we can still experience something like it but why on earth would you try to fix something that is not broken yes yeah and of so. course the, another thing about the animation academy i'm sorry i'm going to keep going on it was not just the animation academy because a single classroom for people to go and learn to draw characters in is not enough to fill up that entire space Obviously, there was more. There is even more areas where you can go and learn about other Disney films. You can learn some of the story writing things that went into these films, like Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast. You can actually figure out some of the design elements that were used to create some of the villains. They had a whole thing back there that was just dedicated 
to the art of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. And now it is a graveyard. Yeah, you know, part of that whole area, that whole animator's courtyard, is that right, Brenda? Yes. Well, I mean, animator's courtyard is still there. It's just, it's, it's like Sophie said, it's kind of like a graveyard. I mean, they have yeah. the, the meet but, and greets with the characters out there, like Fancy Nancy and, you know, Doc McStuffins and stuff like that, but it's yeah. not. Well, part of the, part of the confusion for me over that whole area is it's like everything kind of merged together. It was like, it felt like there was no, in my mind anyway, like there was no um, differentiation between what's Animation Academy, what's Magic of Disney Animation, what's One Man's Dream, and and I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering some of it, but um, it just felt like it was all blah together, and it was... And there was no real delineation over which section was what. But it was all about animation. Like when they took when they took the uh, magic of Disney animation out and they put Kylo Ren meet and greet in there. That's and now he's not even there anymore. He would have done better over by Star Tours. I know. I I don't know. I agree with you, Sophie. We we all miss that very much. That was that was a really special thing to do. The point of Animator's Courtyard was sort of to be like it in a way it was meant to emulate the actual Disney Studios, but it was meant to be a place where the park guests could go in because like I've been to the real animation studios, but I only went because I had the privilege of getting to meet Joe Dunn through Aunt Sheila and Jagan, and he specifically invited me to come see it with them. That was the only way I was ever going to get into the Disney Animation Studios. Animator's Courtyard was meant to sort of be like that, but for someone who, say, didn't know Joe Dunn or Mark Henn or Walt. (laughs) I didn't know Walt, but you know what I'm trying to say. Well, and it Mm -hmm. fostered imagination. Mm -hmm. It, it like, gave children their first opportunity to, to, like, learn about and do animation i mean it was like a it, mm-hmm. it almost was like a an awakening of that whole yeah process and the whole artistry of it for children i thought it was great it was so i'm i'm here in a topic in my head <laughs> um maybe and i guess the topic is how can you know Brenda, Sophie, and myself improve Hollywood Studios by not just by bringing back what was there, but what would we put in its place? You well, know? the Little Mermaid's coming back after all this time, so that part's still going to be taken. Yeah, but that's what I'm thinking about is what what would we do? At Hollywood Studios. That sounds like a topic down the road. What could we do? So you will never not be able to stop me from putting Animator's Courtyard back the way it was. But I do have a few other suggestions that I think I could fit in as well. Okay. Well, hold those suggestions. Write them down so we don't forget them. And we'll cover that on a future topic. Um, Because, you know, Disney isn't going to want to just put it back the way it was because then they're not moving forward. They've moved back, you know. So how do we, yeah, (laughs) but how do we move forward and still keep, you know. And how do we get them to listen to the episode? Well, I I have some connections. I I am Mike. Listen, (laughs) listen, it's been a few years since I've seen mr dunn i don't think he's gonna listen to me on this one yeah uh, yeah. and he probably would listen to you sophie but then he would say sophie i'm sorry but i'm that's not my pay grade i know (laughs) not my avenue so anyway anyway, am i going on to talk about my other thing or are you guys talking about yours now let's move on to brenda oh sorry okay no it's okay i just figure that way we kind of flow it around Okay. Well, 
if anyone's been listening to this show for a while, they're not going to be surprised at my answer because the first thing that always pops into my head that I miss at Hollywood Studios is the Osborne family spectacle of dancing lights. And if the listeners are fans of Osborne, they miss it just as much as I do because I'm telling you, there was nothing like it. And it was just the most magnificent Christmas time pageantry and warmth and all the feels family experience ever. So this, it started, it was Jennings Osborne who lived in Arkansas, who's, he did this magnificent light display for his daughter as a gift for her. She was like seven or something. And he did this crazy lights dancing to music thing he was it was like the first of its kind and he expanded it to like all their property it was just magnificent but all the neighbors around started complaining to the city because not only were these lights flashing and music all the time but like people started driving there from everywhere to see it because it was magnificent so when the city caved and they ended up making him take it down because of the complaints etc disney agreed to buy it from him and then they expanded on it and it was just the most beautiful breathtaking sight it was it was the best thing about christmas at disney in my mind and i i'm i'm hoping some of the listeners will write in about their memories there but the first time i ever saw it we had traveled with my best friend, Susan, and her family. We caravanned to Disney, um, and then we went to Hollywood Studios. We'd never seen it before, and we were walking around, you know, talking and everything, and we got a hot cocoa, and we were walking on the streets of America. We turned the corner, and I just stood there with my jaw hanging open. Just, I couldn't, <laughs> I could not move. I was, I was just... It was magnificent. It was magnificent. Thank you, Brenda, for allowing me to laugh because I can picture you doing that. I could it's like not I move. was right there with you. Yep. And we never saw planted. it. That's the thing. Sophie and I never saw it. And Cindy, we never saw it. Uh, but nope. we did see over at Give Kids the World Village. And yeah, so I, know they mm-hmm. I understand that there. they got donated over there. Yeah. And so we did see it in a way. And it almost makes me feel like um, maybe another topic would be towards Christmas is get people to write in their Christmas memories of oh, seeing Osborne and then have Brenda kind of lead it and and go through some of those comments. And Sophie and I could talk about what we experienced with the give kids the world village and and all that and that might that be it neat. i would love to know people's stories about their memories over there yeah. i wish they'd bring it back so I think much that would be neat so greatly greatly miss it yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. the best ever that was the best thing disney did and doggone it <laughs> just like magical express it's gone oh yeah well I can tell you already, people, you've had two incredible descriptions of things that Brenda and Sophie miss, Sophie and Brenda, in that order. And now you got me. (laughs) So so don't turn the dial. You have great ones, too. (laughs) You know, the first thing that came to my head when I was talking about this topic with the girls was... um, was my weenie, the Sorcerer Mickey hat. <laughs> I know it's weird that we- that would be the first thing that comes to my head. And Actually- I know it was a stage. You know, it was a stage for high school musicals in front of it. But it was also a gift shop. I understand all of that. And, but I miss it. I miss it, it because... The icon. It was the icon and it was supposed to be short term and then it stayed long term and I really liked it. I loved that color of blue. I loved the the sorcerer hat. I love everything about the it. Swoosh, the swoosh yeah. of gold. Yeah. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. And I'm sorry. I I really appreciate Grauman's Chinese theater aside for what it is. Um 
but it does not hold a candle to if you want a picture of a weenie you take a picture of the sorcerer hat the the grama just doesn't doesn't stand up and it just never will and you know so now people take pictures of the what is it the tower with the globe that circles right is that what they take the pictures of now i guess the tower with the globe that circles oh i know what he's talking about um what is he talking about here i'll pull up a picture of it really quick at the entrance the news oh 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 oh, yeah the entrance i got you like the yeah the planet looking thing Uh, i know what you're talking about but there but that's there's no real thing that stands out at hollywood studios as being this means hollywood studios to me anyway it doesn't he's talking about let me just i agree that's what he's talking about yeah yeah you're right because to me that looks too much like universal studios exactly exactly so anyway I i think the problem with the sorcerer mickey's hat is that it was too iconic and that it was not used in the same way as say the other weenies of the disney parks which for those of you who know what we're talking about when we say weenies give us a like on the youtube video because you have been around for a long time yeah but well, the people that didn't like they... the sorcerer's hat said that it was gaudy i mean there were there were just as many people that said it was a gaudy horrible thing as they as the people that like it so it was always like a yeah well, yeah i don't think yeah. it was gaudy it's, I think you're either in team sorcerer hat or team no sorcerer hat. You know, yeah. it's there is no middle ground there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The issue with the sorcerer Mickey hat is that, again, it was not used in the same way as the Cinderella Castle or the Epcot ball or even the Tree of Life was used because Cinderella Castle, you have the walkthrough, you have the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, you have the restaurant up in there and also the exclusive Cinderella Suite, (laughs) the Epcot ball, you have Spaceship Earth in there. That is truly timeless. Tree of Life, you don't have quite as much, but you do have, or have they gotten rid of a bug's life yet? They're going to. Good. That's fine. You still well, have you're all have those. Nothing. Well, either way, you still have all those carvings of the animals into the tree itself. And also, not to mention, they. I think they use it for some of the night shows at Animal Kingdom. They don't have as many night shows anymore yeah. in Animal Kingdom. Well, so. I think that, yeah. I Either think way, the, it's iconic, so it's staying. I yeah. think that the pictures of my, I mean, when I look back on my photo albums, yes, people, there's a thing called photo albums. That's when not everybody had their pictures on their phone. And I actually have a bunch of them, and I look through them sometimes. And the background of the family with the sorcerer's hat compared to the background of the family with Brahmins is just not, there's, there's no comparison to me. I mean, I loved it. I thought it was very ornate and happy and yeah, I like. Yeah, I agree. And you know the you know segue we're rabbit holing now, but um, if you think about it, 1971, big Cinderella castle because Sleeping Beauty castle is so much smaller because the time period Mm -hmm. um so they wanted a huge cinderella castle 1982 epcot they wanted a huge attraction that you could see from ever from everywhere So, so spaceship earth um 89 is mgm which is now hollywood studios they didn't have as much there they didn't have a thing um, they ha- used to have um, what was it the earful, the earful tower, tower yeah and which was what a water that. tower with the with the Mickey ears on it yeah um, and that I guess was kind of the de facto right weenie but it was back there by the back but lot, it wasn't which... in the beginning it was exactly. way up, way back yeah. there um, mm-hmm. and then and I and I really dig 
the tree of life at Animal Kingdom too. Yeah. Except the problem with the tree of life is that it tends to blend in with all the other trees because it's not as hugely bigger than everything else. It kind right. of fits in. So you almost have to be looking for it to really see it. Yeah. Especially if you wanted a picture from further back. So it's almost yeah. like they went with the two big ones and then the other two parks, they kind of were more of an afterthought or, and, and I, it's, I'm not saying a tree of life was an afterthought because it's not because of the detail that they put into it. But from a perspective of it as, you know, the showstopper for animal kingdom, it's not quite as much, I don't think so. Yeah, anyway, you don't see it walking in like you do Cinderella Castle, like you do the ball, you know. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. But I anyway. Think, well, it's my turn again because I'm actually going to highlight on what, some things that you said, Daddy. Well, look at you, girlfriend. Yeah, you go ahead, honey. Okay. All right. So, just a quick tidbit about the Tree of Life. I think the reason they made it the way they did is because, again, Animal Kingdom is all about nature. Mm -hmm. And so I think even though they wanted the Tree of Life to have sort of this fantastical feel to it, I think they were also looking for an idea that the Tree of Life would not be quite as grandiose as, say, Cinderella Castle, because Cinderella Castle is obviously man-made, and they wanted it to appear like nature made the Tree of Life. So yeah. I think that's the reason why the Tree of Life works. On yeah. to back to Hollywood Studios, which this ties into the thing I miss about Hollywood Studios as well. But it's also a reason why Hollywood Studios is sort of the black sheep of the four parks. Oh. Looking at Hollywood Studios, I look at it, I look at it and then I look at Universal Studios Orlando and I realize that they look really similar. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why Hollywood Studios probably is not working as well as it could be is because I think Disney made it in an attempt to compete with Universal at that time, which makes sense because Universal Orlando, Universal yeah. Hollywood, those things, they look really classical Hollywood sort of in a way even universal orlando it has the red carpet it has the archways that look like something you would find at say warner brothers or disney animation studios they look like something you would find in california and disney mm -hmm. realized people like this we should probably make something like it and so hollywood studios or mgm studios as it was originally was their idea and the reason that I say this not just because it looks like it, but because in Universal Hollywood, the Universal Studios Hollywood Park is actually built on the back lots of the Universal Studios, the filming studios, the Warner Brothers Studios. It is built there. So they film a lot of their TV shows, and one of the biggest attractions at Universal Studios is that you can go on this tram ride, this trolley ride in a way, and it will tour you around some of the sets that they have. Obviously, they've kept a lot of these sets simply for the tour. You're not going to find them using the Jaws set with Amity Island and the shark thing the shark animatronic. You're not mm -hmm. going to find them using the Back to the Future set either. But these are all movies that people love. And so they kept these sets set up so that people could see them. And I think Disney saw that people really liked that. And so they were trying to make Hollywood Studios and by extension Animators Courtyard into that same sort of thing because what they ended up doing is on the back lot of MGM Studios, they made what is known as the Disney Feature Animation Florida Division, which is a working film studio. Well, was a working film studio. Keyword was, right? Yes, keyword was. Yeah. And 
it produced some actual movies that we know, especially in the late 90s, early 2000s. Pixar was over in California, but Disney was still making movies during that time. And one of two of my favorite examples were Lilo and Stitch and The Emperor's New Groove. These were two movies that were made in the Florida division of Disney. And unfortunately, even though they are amazing movies now, they did not do so well in the box office for whatever reason. And it, it was because of these movies that unfortunately the Florida division closed down. But Hollywood Studios is still there. So now we see Hollywood Studios, we see Animators Courtyard, we see all of it. And we, even though we may not know about the Florida Studios, we realize that something is missing from it because the Florida Studios is not there. I would have loved to go to Hollywood Studios while it was still a functioning division of the company. Well, MGM Studios. I didn't, my first time going to Disney was in what, 2005? Probably. Yeah, the studios closed down in 2004. So I never got the chance to see it, and I have to wonder what it would have been like. Yeah, it might have been even later than that, Sophie. It may have been 2007 for your first trip to Hollywood Studios. I don't know. I thought <clears throat> I was... Because we didn't go, five. we didn't go there with Leanne and them, uh, and that was in 2005. 2006, we just went the one day with Mima to Magic Kingdom. Okay. So 2007 was our first time staying on property. Okay. So it's All probably right, so 2007. Yeah. So but, yeah, um, there was no way I was going to see MGM Studios while the. While the Florida division was open, yeah. there was just no way, yeah. which is a little bit sad, but what are you going to do? Right. And, you know, um, you talked it briefly about how much similar, how similar the Universal Studios Florida and Hollywood Studios are. And they are to the point that Brenda and I get people, clients that yeah. get confused and think, I'm going to Hollywood Studios to see how to see Harry Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're nope. not going to Hollywood Studios to see Harry Potter. You will find zero Harry Potter at Hollywood Studios. That's you, right. You the... want to talk about Universal Orlando Resort and Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure. So the most Harry Potter you will find in a Disney park is people who wear their Harry Potter merch. And then you'll have people like me and Jagan who see them wearing their Hufflepuff ties and their Gryffindor robes. And we'll be like, you do realize you're at the wrong park, right? Yeah. So. It's kind of funny, but yeah. It is. And another movie that was filmed in Florida was Mulan. And yeah. all these, I had no idea. You're right, which I think and is I the think reason why Mushu was in the Animation Academy. Exactly, yes. Yeah, great great point, Sophie. Great point. Yeah. Way to pull that back together. Yeah. But that's Gizun a really type, good Daddy. discussion. I was coughing, and thank you. Um, So, Brenda, your turn. Yes. Okay, <laughs> well, what ties in my... Osborne Family Spectacle of Dancing Lights to this other part that I'm going to discuss is that Osborne Family Spectacle of Dancing Lights started at dusk, and when it wasn't on, all you had was the Streets of America. But I miss the Streets of America. The Streets of America were, were made to be like a movie set of like the fronts of buildings and storefronts uh -huh. from New York and San Francisco, and yeah. it looked cool. And it had, like, I'm a huge fan. I used to be a huge fan of Once Upon a Time that was a Disney series. And they had Mr. Gold's shop there. And they had the pole with singing in the rain there. And, you know, they had things from the movies. Plus, they also had, um, well, they had Muppets, Muppets Vision 3D. They still have they it also, there. 
Right. It's just not on Streets of America anymore since there's no Streets of America anymore. But they also had this, the Honey, I Shrunk the Audience movie set that the kids could play on. And my kids oh. loved playing in there. So I loved Sophie. playing in there. I mean, it was so fun. It was neat. It, everything was exactly like the set because that was the, the set stuff they used. And so the, the grass was slides and the it was just awesome. So yeah. I miss the Streets of America. And then, of course, you know, when they lit it up at night. <clears throat> The beauty oh. and the majesty of the Osborne family spectacle of dancing. Backlot night. Studio Tour isn't there anymore, is it? That was no. on Streets of America. No. Studio Backlot no. Tour. And you know what's interesting about that is when it first opened, it was just like the Universal Hollywood Tour. It, yeah. it was like a two-hour tour. And people did it once and were like, oh, that's way too long. And so they cut it down to like, the, the studio backlot tour of 34 35 minutes or whatever um and we saw it once we never saw it when it was the two hour we saw it i was terrified of it because there was fire oh yeah, yeah. And that fire was hot it yeah. was hot and i was like and what was, but what was really hot. cool was they would bring people from the from the line yeah. into the show and i've got so many awesome pictures of the guy sitting in the room he's yeah. talking on the phone and the water just comes yeah it <laughs> just yep. tears him up oh my gosh that was so funny i'm like oh dude he's gonna get it <laughs> oh we used to do the back lot tour every time because like it was kind of like a one and done but every time we took somebody with us that had never been to disney like one of the kids friends we did it so yeah. we did it gotcha. a few times, quite a few times. Yeah. But, but anyway, yeah, yeah. The and, of, and the streets I, of America just, were great. That yeah. it was. Um, and you know, my segue um, is, you know, we talked about how much we like the Grauman's Chinese Theater, but it doesn't hold up as a weenie. And what we miss about that is, we miss the great movie ride. And yeah. I am yeah. not. And I am not saying that I do not love Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway because yeah. I really dig that ride. And I and it's actually perhaps it might be one of my favorites at Hollywood. For sure. Oh, it's definitely yeah. one of my favorites. I don't know what my ranking is anymore because it changes every time I ride something. But certainly. um but I miss great mm-hmm. movie ride as well. You know, and, and because it was so unique and how yeah. how it just moved through the different scenes of these incredible f- films and and just flowed together almost. You know, we talked about um, we talked about Coco getting getting in, yeah. into Philhar Magic and how it just seamlessly was there like it had always been there. And mm-hmm. that's what this ride is. It seamlessly moved you. From scene to scene to scene, yeah. and it was really neat. And it, okay, and it let me ask you a like question. It, so. Yes, what was your favorite scene? Did you like the cowboy side or the gangster side? I liked the cowboy side because I was always nervous in the gangster side that. <laughs> It was going to be loud and it was going to bother my ears. I gotcha. But, but looking back on it, I really liked the gangster side probably better, except for that little hesitancy, you know? Ah, what about you, Sophie? Now, see, my favorite parts of that ride didn't come until later. So we both got to experience them no matter which side we were on. I personally, thought the gangster side was a little more realistic. I liked that one a little bit more mm-hmm. because it made sense why the gangster would be trying to steal the um treasure from the mummy scene yeah, and got yeah. turned into whatever. But my favorite scenes of all had to be the Wizard of Oz and the Mary Poppins oh, scene. Oh, yes. Yeah. I like the singing in the rain and the definitely uh-huh. the Wizard of Oz. That was so well done. It yeah. was. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Trip oh, down now I lane. miss it even more than I did before you brought it up. Now we're I'm depressed. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I will so. say, though, 
The line queue for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is a little more bearable. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And it's I a also, good ride. Oh, I just really love that ride. The Mickey, they did such a good job with it. It almost makes it hard to be upset that the great movie ride is not there anymore. But yeah, the only thing upsetting is that they could have put that anywhere. I mean, they built on, they can, they well, could have built it anywhere. I think the reason they put it there is because the great movie ride, a lot of those movies, I think, were from MGM Studios. And now that it is no longer MGM Studios, I don't think. Disney has the legal rights to continue putting them in that ride. I don't know about that. And that could be, that could be. Um, but the other side of it is if it's no longer MGM studios, then it's also, you know, out of, out of context in a, in a way of it being Hollywood studios. I don't That's know. true. I suppose. So, but anyway, still. Well, that's now that we're all move. depressed for the day. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, so I guess the question is, how do we convince Disney to open a fifth park of nothing but retired attractions? I don't think that's ever gonna happen, Daddy. I don't either. I don't I think either. But imagine the imagine the rides that could be there. You're right. You're absolutely right. Holy cow! Yeah. And I'll bet you that park would explode. <laughs> People I'm would sure be, it would. People would be waiting hours to ride some of these things. <laughs> Man, so many possibilities. Yeah. But they just stick on one couple of, you know, groups of fans for certain things. You know, I did I hear, and I forgot to, of, yeah. I forgot about it. Um, You know, we talk every now and again, the topic of virtual cues comes into my head. And... I heard that there was a survey for people who had ridden Tron asking what they thought about virtual queue for Tron and whether they, it should be continued or gotten rid of. Mm. Um, I have no idea what the results were. It's a Disney survey. So, you know, mm. like one of those when you're leaving the attraction, hey, can we ask you a question? Yeah. What kind of things. And gotcha. so I just curious to see, I wonder if that, do you think they would get rid of virtual queue out of Tron? Well, they usually do. Like once the ride isn't so new anymore, they they do it like everything else. That's what they'll do with Guardians too, I guess. Yeah. They started off with virtual queue till the newness wears off to where it can be regular. But then I don't know. I I really like how the virtual queue worked, um, but I also liked how they did the rider swap during the party. They had, they really did that well. They really did that well. And I'm impressed by that. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what they'll do. It's worth paying attention know. to see what comes down. Yeah. But anyway, so like I said, Brenda, awesome. Sophie, awesome. Mike <laughs> just gave you a couple little things. No. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're no. bad. You did great. <laughs> we all miss all these things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we do. And it's and it's just, you know. I want to hear what our stuff. what our listeners write in though. Yeah, I would like to hear what you all think. Um you know, yeah. what I mean, even things like the Jedi Training Academy that are gone. That yeah. was kids Star loved Wars, that. Star Wars weekends. I mean, I how hard that. would it be to bring back the Jedi Training Academy? They got the Star Tours right there. Uh, and they remember, got Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. Do you remember back in the day, you would get to the park and you would have to make a decision or split up. One of you go for a Toy Story Fast Pass. One of you go to get your yes. kids' names on the list for Jedi training. Yes. And I liked you know? it that way. Yeah. And, and I mean, it was like, dude, you just ate down that cinnamon roll. Well, you just carved it off. You just That's took right. it all off, and those carbs are gone now. That They're calorie gone. is gone because you were right. booking it through the park. <laughs> I am still a fan of paper fast pass. I'll never change my mind. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. Anyway, great topic. You know, I, I liked it because we were able to, to go back down memory lane a little mm -hmm. bit. So, 
So people, tell us what you think. Thank you for listening, but also tell us what you think. What do you miss from Hollywood Studios? And um, and we'll we'll share your answers. Um, now it's time though for this day in Disney history. And Sophie has some awesome history, don't you, Sophie? I have two bits of history, and they both pertain to Disney legends. Yay! Awesome. Go for it. All right, well, our first bit of history is a birthday. It comes in 1956, March 25th. Actor and 2004 Disney legend Matthew Garber is born in London, England. Although he appeared in The Three Lives of Thomasina, his screen debut at age seven, and the Gnome Mobile, Disney fans know him best as young Michael Banks in 1964, Mary Poppins. Nice. Yeah. As well as the birthday, we do unfortunately have a death day, though. I know, I'm sorry. It's... It's not a happy episode that much. Happy for him. <laughs> you're right. In 2001, March 25th, 2001, the two-time Academy Award winning producer, director, and the 1998 Disney legend, Lawrence M. Larry Landsberg, passed away at age 89 in his home at Eagle Point, Oregon. Hmm. He worked on a number of well-known Disney productions, including the original Fantasia and Cinderella. In the 1970s, he produced and directed shows for television's The Wonderful World of Disney from his Southern Oregon home. Nice. Rest in peace. Rest in yes, peace. Hey, rest in peace. Oh, goodness gracious. These people had wonderful... Yeah. They did. Uh goodness well that is great history sophie thank you you know and, and it's in, it's and you know what funny. for his family as sad a day as it is and it's an anniversary but as sad a day as it is it's also um a day of remembrance you know and and you honored them sophie mm -hmm. by bringing his name up today so That's right so if they hear it, then then they might be like, hey, they were talking about dad or grandpa. Grandpa, or, yeah. You know? So yeah. well done, Sophie. Thank you. Yeah. Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Now. Now it's time to stomp the soap. Good it is luck. not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> this character, I think this is so easy. But of course, <laughs> I know who it is. This character knows all about jazz. Naveen, Princess and the Frog? No. Lewis, Princess and the Frog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you know, Sophie, that he found a discarded trumpet and taught himself to play? Yeah, I did know that. <laughs> And did you know that he plays lead in the band? I could figure that out too, yes. <laughs> Lewis, Princess and the Frog. Nice, very good. Where is it? Where is it? There he is. There he is. Yeah, I remember that he taught himself because Naveen asked where he learned to play like that. And he said, oh, the Bayou is the number one jazz school in the world. There you go. <laughs> Is he an alligator or a crocodile? He's a gator. Yeah. He's a gator. I don't so know. On this episode, we had a drawing of a crocodile and a gator as the character. Yep. Yeah. We're just fitting all in around here. <laughs> we are. That looks so good. I you first need to I tell the private, the, the silent partner that she did a fabulous job on that. She did. Yeah. She drew that for the 50th anniversary, I think. When we really good. Yeah, she did that with. Mhm. Mm Cause there is her with signature. Sheila October. And with Jake and they went in and did it. And October nice. 2nd, 2021, 50th anniversary. 
There you go. Nice. Very nice. Well, Lewis from Princess and the Frog. Told you it was easy, Sophie. Good job, Sophie. (laughs) What were the other clues, I wonder? Well, the second one was he found a discarded trumpet. And the third one is that he plays, he's the lead in the band. (laughs) Wow. Very good, Sophie. All right. Thank you. Well, it's now time for Brenda with a little bit of Walt. Oh, we love him, don't we? God, what a great man. Yeah. I've always been bored with just making money. I wanted to do things. I wanted to build things to get something going. What money meant to me was that I was able to get money to do that for me. That was his priority. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and that's the way money and finances should be. They should be a means to an end. Yeah. Not way too many people focus on how much can I make? And yeah. it's really more about what does what that do give. for you and yeah. what you can give and what you're, you know, what you can do with that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So he well was done. Able to share his gift with us all because of it. Mm-hmm. Thank mm-hmm. God it, he had it. Yeah, exactly. Well, my friends, that wraps us up for this week. We are coming back next week and we are talking food because, you know, I just can't get enough of food and I'm on a diet. So this is the only way I eat. We love talking about food. (laughs) You're doing very well with your diet, though. Yay! Thank you. I'm doing okay on my diet, but I appreciate the support. We'll get you there. Um, we'll get you so there. next week we're talking about fish, specifically fish and chips. And we are ranking the best places to get your fish and chip fix. Fish and yeah. chip fix. And speaking yeah. of fish, I have to I have to give a shout out to my oldest granddaughter, Aaliyah, who's 12. Because she got the lead in the school play Finding <gasps> Nemo. <gasps> so, yay! Oh, that's so, so I'm exciting. very excited about it. So she's playing oh. Nemo? Yes. Oh my gosh! And she's a sixth grader in a school for sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. So I, I tell I, her wow. how proud of her I am. I will. We're just, it's going to be amazing. That sh- it's going to be amazing. <laughs> I'm that's so awesome. happy for that her. That is so awesome, Brenda. That's cheddar. That should have been Yay! in the front of the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well done, Aaliyah. Well done. Gosh. Oh, you see, oh. everyone said watching all these Disney movies at home when you're five won't amount to anything. <laughs> Look again. Look uh-huh. again. People. <laughs> so is it the Broadway version of it? It's the musical. <gasps> that means it has one of my favorite songs in it. The musical. She has a beautiful voice. Oh, I'm so happy for her. It's going to be wonderful. I can't wait to see it. And it's going to be yes. May 9th and 10th. So it's like right before Mother's Day. What a gift. Do you think you can yeah. film it so we can watch it? I don't know that I can film the whole thing. I don't know how long it's going to be. How long will a phone last? Oh, that's true. I don't know. I'll, oh. do the, I'll do my best to film as much as I can. It's okay. If you can't film all of it, the only part I ask you to film is the part with the dude crush and the ACC part. That's my okay. favorite part. All right. But I'll of course, it. anything that Aaliyah's singing, we need to see. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that takes precedence over dude crush. <laughs> oh, no. And the dude need crush need parts to. are going to be great, though. Of course. Yeah. All but right. The greatest stuff Aaliyah's in. I know. All right. Well, great job. Congratulations, Aaliyah. So that is a positive spin on a sometimes hard episode. But anyway, next week, we're talking about our fish and chips. Start getting your list together, people. Rank your favorite to your least favorite or vice versa. Rank your least favorite to your favorite places to get fish and chips. And we'll see if we all match up together but um until then i'm mike she's sophie that's brenda and he's grogu and we will see see you on on the road. road bye
Bye. Bye, everyone.